G'day, Ben from Duck Playing Chicken here with another build series. This time back to my favourite type of kits, the Space Battleship Yamato Mecha Collar Kits. Now this is a set from uh, Space Battleship Yamato 2202 and it's set number seven which is a, it's actually a box of five kits from the Andromeda class. So five uh, very cool um, ships and if we turn this other side you can see the ones that you get. You get the Aldebaran, you get the Apollo Norm, the Andromeda, the Achilles and the Antares. So really cool set. Now these, a couple of these I believe come out as individual sets so I know the Andromeda and the Apollo Norm um, because I actually have those kits. And those kits come with stickers. Thankfully, with this kit, we get water slide decals. So uh, kind of the reason why I wanted um, this particular set. But let's start off by having a look what's in the box. And it is a sizable box for Mecha Collier, just because it is five kits. And so you can see right off the bat, here are our water slide decals. There we go. So yeah, I know with the little individual kits, of uh, these craft, their, their stickers, which is a bit annoying. Now the other thing that's interesting about this kit is that you actually get an instruction sheet. So normally with these Mecha Collie kits, the instructions are printed on the inside of the box. So they've actually provided instructions for the two different types of craft. Um, so it's nice and they have and some color call outs, uh, what comes in the kit, which of course I'm gonna go through in a minute. So, um, yeah, just a little bit of a different way of doing things, I guess. Now, there are uh, quite a few sprues in this kit, and some of them uh, repeat. But, and we can have a look. And, of course, no surprise that the level of detail in these things is just astounding. So, look at the size of those tiny little cannons. Plenty of pieces to break off and uh, for me to snap. So. so they do come in a couple of colours. So obviously for the um, uh, like for the Andromeda, for example, which is a lighter colour, but again, just uh, you know, huge amount of detail. So this is essentially the same sprue as the, the one I just showed. So these two are identical. And we get. Of course, two in the grey. Yeah, so four. Is it for the norm and the antennas? I think you get essentially the same sprue, but there's a little bit missing off them. All right, and then we get. Um, so there's a lot of repeating pieces in this kit because they are all the same class of uh, craft. And then we get, so these are the ones with the, the decks on the top. So we get a couple of those. And again, just the level of detail on these things is just fantastic. So much, uh, so much detail for such a little uh, kit. Now the other thing that sort of makes this kit, I guess, a little bit different is that it comes with comes with the typical sort of stands of the new um, of the new Mecha Collar kits. So it's sort of got a ball joint at the top that allows you to pose it. Now of course I won't be using these because I will be lighting my kit but as far as the stands go these are a lot better than like the original stands that came with the original kits. Um, so they're good. But this one also comes with this kind of stepped stand so uh, I don't know it's a bit too blingy for me it's got um, like a silver fleck in it um, the uh, these holes here they're not holes all the way through it's almost like they're serious sink marks so I don't know if you can see that but that's a bit disappointing um, I think if you were going to use this you would almost need to putty those up um, because the 
the stands, if you can see that, they're not like round holes on the bottom of these. It's not like you can just put the stem of the stand straight into that deck. So that's a little bit disappointing. You need to putty those up, I reckon, and paint it if you were going to um, try and make it look spot on. <clears throat> and it comes with these pieces, which I think are, what are they to do with? Yeah, they're like feet or something for this particular piece. So, I mean, it's nice they've sort of thought about, you know, presenting these in one sort of, uh, on one sort of display stand, but yeah, I, I don't know. It seems a bit, a bit how you're doing. Um, so anyway, I won't be using this, but I may use it, you know, I may putty up these things, paint it and use it for a different, uh, different purpose. So that's pretty much the, what's, in the box. I've started putting the first of these kits together and just to sort of get an idea of how I'm going to go about lighting it because of course uh, I don't build these Mecha Collar kits anymore without lighting them so um, I think these particular class of ships are actually going to be reasonably straightforward to light and of course that'll be famous last words but I want to sort of talk about what I've um, what I've done take you through the uh, the process so I've done obviously I've done quite a bit of work off camera first of all just getting the bits off the sprues and what have you and the construction of these are pretty much the same so I'm going to show you one and the construction yeah it really doesn't vary that much um, between the different models it's really only the sort of top deck that um, that changes so essentially there's sort of these two uh, two halves that make up the uh, make up the main hull and then there's um, a couple of side bits that go on. <clears throat> I'm just putting these sort of on loosely because I want to sort of show you the other work that I've done. Um, there's a nose piece that goes on the front. Um, there's also some, uh, some of these go on the back. And this is where we're going to be drilling some holes. And then we sort of have these side pieces that go on. And again, you know, as with all these Mecha Collar kits, especially the later ones, um, the way Bandai have sort of disguised the seams is really, um, uh, really quite amazing. Now, if we get to the bridge, the bridge is actually made up of three parts. Uh, so it's quite a bit of detail in it, and that sort of slots in the uh, in the top there. There are some guns that go on the top here. Now I've just got these sort of on clips ready for painting at this stage. Um, underneath there is a couple of fins. There are also these uh, these pods which come in two halves that you have to sort of glue. Um, again. Let's see if we just uh, get one of those in so you get an idea of what it looks like. So they just pop in sort of like that. There's a couple of other sort of smaller uh, fin details at the front. There's this intake and fin. So you sort of get an idea of what it looks like and the parts that are sort of involved. It's, um, yeah, it's not a, not a particularly difficult one. Um, but I want to sort of talk about the things that I've had to do in order to light it. So I'm going to take the bridge off, take these side parts off. So I haven't had to do anything to the bridge or these side pieces I'm taking off now. But I will strip it back to we're at the start so you get an idea of exactly what I've done and first thing I need to do take the notes off before I try and take that apart okay so all right so with the two halves there's a little bit of work that I've had to do as far as drilling out areas or just grinding them out using um, I just use my handy nail drill and this fancy uh, thing with a little grinder bit on it 
And so what I'm looking at doing is basically there are going to be some wires coming in at the back for the rear thruster and there's going to be a number of other, uh, there's actually going to be another four LEDs in the back here for the other sort of thrusters. So I've had to sort of drill out a bit in here to allow the, uh, the wires to flow through and they're going to sort of go essentially down uh, down through where you can see this bit here. This is where it's going to be mounted. Now at the moment, it's got a hole in place for the stand. And what I'll end up doing is drilling this out to three mil. So it takes one of my metal tubes and I can run the wires down into it. So it only has to go to this point. The, so it's going to be essential. I think there's five LEDs at the back of it. And then when we get to the front, there's actually going to be two for the uh, front weapons here. So I've had to sort of drill out a little bit on the side of these uh, post holes here to allow the wires to go through. And the wires I'm going to be using are going to be pretty thin. So I reckon, um, you know, I've sort of had to drill that out too, um, just so that the wires can all go back to that one point. So when we're looking at the rear thrusters, um, the first thing is normally these thrusters, this is what they look like before they're modified. Okay, so they're actually sort of this, uh, they've got this T shape in here and they sort of slot in place. Yeah, so it sort of slots in place like that. Now, these are two thrusters here. Um, of course two on the other side what I want to do is mount LEDs on them and so at the moment there's sort of no real way to get the wires through into the main hull so the way that I've done that is first of all I have drilled two very small holes these are 1.2 millimeter holes in the, uh, the nozzles there so you can see they go all the way through and I've also trimmed quite a bit off this piece so if I compare it to the other one You'll be able to sort of see what I've had to do. So I've just used the nippers and knife and a bit of sanding just to cut it down. And the reason for that is so we can actually get some wires through. So if I hook this one up, um, make sure I get on the right side. There we go. So now you should be able to see there's this hole at the bottom here and that will allow the wires to go into the hull and then of course down through the uh, the stand post so once that's in place this side piece goes over it and covers up all that sort of uh, the wiring detail but you just get a, a better idea of what's actually going on so each of those uh, thrusters will have one LED mounted behind them. The good thing is too about these pieces is that I can keep them separate. I can paint them up and then I will uh, glue the LEDs to the back of them and they're ready to go. Um, and then I can sort of do that as part of the assembly. So that's sort of the, the four kind of uh, thrusters at the back, the smaller thrusters. Now for the main thruster, that's a bit more of an issue, just because, so I get this around the right way, the way it's set up is that, and I've already started drilling this out, but it's actually got sort of these uh, slots in here, and if we look at one that I haven't actually modified yet, the rear cone, it has, um, a little cone in there and the back of it has this these tabs that slot into the back there now of course I want the I want an LED in there I want to um, you know to shine out and look like it's uh, firing up so what I've done is I've basically grind ground out all of that those tabs that are going to hold it in place. And this is actually, I think, a four and a half mil hole that I ended up drilling. Now, the problem with doing that, I ended up using the grinding tool to clean out most of it, because as you can see, there's 
quite a bit of material you have to sort of grind out and as a result of that I've sort of lost my tabs and the other thing that happened was uh, I lost the little cone in the middle so I ended up having to make a new one and for that I took a piece of the sprue and literally just sanded the end of it just while twisting you know uh, turning this piece and so now and of course I'll cut it to length but essentially it will mount I'll have a uh, let's see if we get the light there but you get the idea so I have a bit of uh, frosted clear um, styrene in there um, and this will be cut down to size so it will be stuck there and it'll it'll essentially look like this the only difference is that the area around the cone will be lit up by an LED so that's the work I've had to do there now of course taking these tabs off um, I had to find a way of sort of I could just glue this straight back on but um, I think that might be a little bit problematic so what I've done is I've taken some one and a half mil styrene and just cut it into thin strips and then there's uh, three mil worth of styrene so these tabs and what they do is they slot into here so essentially I've kind of recreated the I guess the tabs that are going to hold the uh, the cone in place now I'm not sure how effective these are going to be um, they seem to work okay. Um, you know, they kind of hold the cone in place there quite nicely at the moment. Um, but we'll see. It's, uh, I'm not sure how good. I think I'll end up just, uh, just gluing it. But while I'm testing it and everything, that should be fine. So that's kind of the work I've done, the preliminary work around uh, making sure I get the light sorted. So normally when I'm doing the lighting these kits, um, I will, you know, make sure I've got the lighting sorted before I start painting. Now for the front, so the front weapons, um, there's this nose piece and if I take that off again you can see I've drilled holes through it so that way I could put LEDs behind it color them and they should uh, show up nicely and of course those holes go all the way through in the front these pegs You can sort of see the holes there, so that way I can mount the LEDs on the inside inside here and um, do all the light blocking and all that sort of thing, so that should be good to go. So I think, what have I got? One, two, four, six, seven LEDs in this particular, uh, this particular kit. So I'm going to go through quite a few LEDs. If I've got five of these to put together. I was considering putting an LED in the bridge for uh, these tiny little windows but I'm just not going to be able to get the LED in there it's just too narrow so I think what I'll do is I end up using a bit of enamel paint bright green or something to um, uh, to sort of highlight those but uh, I was a little bit disappointed when I was looking out the road it'd be nice to put an LED in there but no it looks like it would just be the thrusters and the uh, the main weapons out the front I've been working on the rear uh, thruster and so if I light this up now it is a little bit rough just because the cone in the middle is not glued down it's only sort of blue tacked in place so let's light this up and have a look at it so you can sort of see that's the kind of effect I'm going for so it'll be a blue light and it'll have the cone sort of sticking in the middle like I said, it's not centered, it's not perfect, um, but it's not glued in place neither. No, it's just blue tacked in there to give you an idea what's going on. So I thought it'd be a good idea to sort of show you how I actually got to that point. I think the rest of the lights are probably going to be a bit more straightforward than the, uh, the rear thruster. Now I've already covered the fact that I created these little uh, clips, I guess, just out of some strip styrene. I use these to uh, sort of clip on the the rear thruster. If I can get these ones to work, there we go. 
so it sort of holds in place like that and the reason that I've had to go down that path is because I've basically grinded the clip out of the thrust that normally holds it in place so since working on what I could do for the light I've realized that these aren't actually um, they're not uh, correct and what I need to do is just trim them down a little bit so that the clip bits sit flush with the back and the reason for that is because I'm making a very small light box to contain the LED in I didn't want the LED right up against the frosted bit of uh, plastic so I want to give it a bit of space so the light disperses a bit better so it is a little bit fiddly but basically I take my existing clips that I made and I trim them down and you'll see what I mean by having them sit flush up against the back of the, the fuselage and there we go and sort of sit up um, flush against it now if I clip this on it still holds the thruster in place and really that's just going to be a temporary thing eventually I'll be um, I think I'll be gluing it in but we'll, we'll see how it goes so that holds it in place there and holds it nice and tight so the other thing that I want to do is just at the moment uh, you may be able to see it's a little bit you know it's not flat so I'm just going to take a sanding stick and just quickly sort of file them both down there we go okay so that's a bit that's a bit better the clips don't need to be huge if we just double check it should still hold that in place there we go all right so the next step is to create the very small light box that the led is going to go into uh, what i i don't have any styrene uh, tube at hand so i've had to like round tube so i've had to go with this rectangular uh, tube so this is um, for your reference this is um, the evergreen uh, products and so this is 6.3 by 6.3 millimeters um, it's just a yeah rectangular tube sorry square tube it comes in a long length so I've just cut off a piece of that and it's literally only one or two millimeters wide it's uh, very thin so what do we got uh, yeah it's about two two and a half millimeters thick it's really just because we've got sort of limited space within the the uh, thruster here to sort of get everything in there so the first thing is to put in the diffuser so this is just a bit of clear um, styrene well actually I just used some plastic came off a sketchbook or something but you can use clear styrene and you just sand it down to um, so that it'll diffuse the light so that sort of sits in the sits in the bottom there just want to make sure it's sort of reasonably centered and sits flat and then what will happen is the rectangular uh, light box will go in there and it will need a lid as well so I've got to cut this is just half mil sheet styrene and I'm just going to cut it roughly to the, uh, the shape we need to trim a bit of that off by the look of it. Now it's a matter of trying to get everything to sit flat in there. Okay. So we now sort of have the lid on it. And of course I haven't glued any of this together yet. It's really just to check to see that the clips will still hold it in place. And now in action. So now the, the clips sort of hold it in place. All the contents for the um, little light box in there is now in place. So now it's sort of a matter of gluing it all together and getting the LED uh, into this light box. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this tiny backing piece and I'm going to put a hole off center and I'm just going to drill it with the uh, craft knife and I'm going to take one of these pre-wired 
tiny LEDs, there's like two millimeter SMD LEDs that are pre-wired. I'm going to give it a quick test just before I um, yeah, before I stick it down. As much as these things are, you know, cheap and um, readily available, every now and then you get one that maybe uh, something's gone wrong, dry solder joint or something like that, and uh, they don't work. So it's always worth testing them before you stick them down. All right. So and now we're going to thread the wires through this tiny hole. And what we're aiming to do is have the LED sit as much in the middle as possible. You don't really want the hot spot to be sort of on a on the side, which is easier said than done. I'm just going to put a bit of paper underneath because I will be using uh, resin to seal this in, and I don't want to get all my cutting that. This is pretty horrible stuff. Yeah, I may need some blue tack to hold that down. Okay, now as far as the resin goes, I'm just using this, uh, you know, it's fairly cheap uh, UV curing resin. The good thing about it is you've got as much working time as you need to get your parts lined up properly, and then you, of course you just use the uh, UV torch to seal it. So I'll put a little bit on a scrap bit of plastic here, and then I'll get a toothpick. Just get enough of the resin over the LED. That will stick to this story. Now I actually have get this out of the way. I've got a new UV torch. So this one is actually mains powered as opposed to a battery one just because um, I'm sick of going through batteries. Alright, so let me check this is okay. Turn this on. Let's see what in place. Yeah, I'm not sure how I've gone here. I think I might be, uh, might be too proud of the plastic. Let's see if it uh, still fits. Alright. Oh yeah, that'll be okay. That'll work. So, you can see the LED is just stuck on there now with a bit of uh, dab of resin. And I'll also do a little bit on the back as well. And now this is really just to take up the, um, the strain, if you like. I mean, it's not completely necessary, but... I don't want the wires coming loose. Just put a little bit of resin over the uh, over the wires on the back. Okay, so the next thing is to put the wall around it, and for that I'll be using uh, just normal styrene cement. Now the other advantage of you doing a little light box uh, system like this is that I'll be able to completely light block it. So, well it's tiniest little uh, light box. The next step is to take some clear blue paint. So for that I am using X23. I think I've said this before, but um, when you're when you're doing LED work, you know if you're looking at buying LEDs, I wouldn't bother buying specific coloured ones. You, know, you can do a lot um, with clear clear paint. What I'm doing is I'm just dabbing it in there. I'm just sort of roughly painting the sides of the light box as well, but it's not really that important. Once you put the diffuser over the top of it, you hardly even see it. And again, we can do a bit of a test just to see how well that blue works. 
There we go, it's probably a bit hard to see on the screen, it's probably not coming up that blue. Right. Once we put the diffuser over it, it'll be fine. Alright, now the next thing is to use, I'm going to use a bit of super glue uh, to hold the diffuser in place and so it's just going to sit on top. A little bit of super glue on my super glue palette. And then I'm just going to dab a little bit, because I don't need a huge amount. Once it's all clamped in place it'll be fine. Just a little bit on each of the sides. And then put that on. All right, so now we should be able to put this in here. And clamp it in place. All right, and there you have it. So once the cone goes in the middle, that's going to look pretty good. So I've finished light blocking the very small light box that I've made for the rear thruster. So this sort of sits in here. I've taped off the end of it, masked it, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute, why I've masked it off. But essentially that sits in the back of the thruster now, as far as the light blocking goes, I've just used uh, this tulip black fabric paint. And if I test it, this is very small. Actually, I don't think there's any, those tiniest little bit of light leaking out of that, but it looks a bit green at the moment just because it's got masking tape over it. But um, I think the, uh, the light blocking is fine. Now when I was sort of thinking about the rest of the lighting of this kit, there's sort of something you need to consider. And if we have a look at the painting guide, you'll notice that uh, four out of the five of them have these light grey stripes down the side of them. And of course that goes right along the seam of the, uh, the two hull halves. So if I put this together, there are a couple of areas where I'm going to need to address the seams. The first one is along here and then also in the rear thruster. In fact, if I sort of move it a bit, you can sort of see that, uh, see that seam there. So I need to actually glue these two bits together so I can deal with those seams. Um, there are actually um, other bits that go on the side, but they're not going to be a problem. It's really just these ones. And if we have a look at um, certainly um, like the Achilles for example uh, right on the tail there there is actually a decal that goes in that light grey stripe so it's important that I actually deal with you know deal with this uh, deal with this seam so that the, the decal goes down nice so the I guess the, the thing to think about is how I'm going to get all the light set up and you know ready for mounting on a post and all that sort of thing even before I start um, painting. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to do to make that happen. First of all if we take this piece these are the clips of course that I made for holding in the rear uh, thruster so if I just put that in loosely, I'm not going to glue it in place at this stage. This is really just to sort of uh, work out where I need things to go. And what I'm going to be doing is basically gluing the wires down up until this point here, because this is sort of my exit point for the wires in the meantime. Um, that way it allows me to sort of connect everything together outside of the model kit and then shove it back in and put the side uh, panel on. So what I do is I use a toothpick to sort of feed the wire down where I want it. And then I'm just going to be using UV resin just to um, basically hold it in place. Of course you don't have to use UV resin. Uh, you can use, um, you could use super glue, does the same thing. 
I just tend to find that uh, for me UV resin gives me a little bit of flexibility in moving stuff around uh, before I sort of set it in place. All right, so I'll get a toothpick and take a little dab of this UV resin. The other thing I really like about it is it's quite, the stuff I've got here is quite viscous. So it means you can sort of really control where you want it to be before you sort of set it in place. All right, so that's sort of the start of it. I can now take this off. I need to be careful. There we go. So now you can see why I've masked the end of it. When I get around to painting the hull, um, of course I'm going to be throwing paint all over the place so I don't want any paint actually um, going onto the frosted clear part. So I'm just going to continue along the lines, trying to get the wires sort of sitting as flat as possible. And um, the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm going to be actually running a few other wires you know in the cavity of the hull so the more I can have stuff sort of tucked tucked away the less likely I am to run into problems down the track the other thing about setting this wire in place with the resin is that it prevents any uh, stress on the joint of where the wire joins up with the LED so I'm not likely to have the wires coming away from the LED and I mean you could even use tape to do this you don't sort of need to uh, even use super glue but I just tend to find it's a good idea to use something that's going to be at least a little bit more a uh, little bit more permanent and the other thing that I should point out is that I've actually uh, ground out some more <laughs> more parts in this there's not too much left you can see I've really gone to town on uh, hollowing this thing out really just sort of keeping the peg holes and a little bit of the reinforcement so um, I've sort of drilled out bits on the sides and part of that is going to be so I can see what happens when I feed LEDs through later on that'll become a little bit clearer a bit later on this video um, so before I sort of close it up, what I need to do is clean up some of these areas where I've ground away the plastic. Now, when you use like a grinding tool, you always get sort of rough edges and, you know, it could be a little bit sharp and, and what have you. So I just use a bit of, to me, an extra thing and run it over the edge of where I've used the grinding tool and that tends to you know, melt the plastic a little bit or melt it enough so it's no longer sort of sharp edges that you have to worry about because I am going to be using uh, insulated wire and I don't expect that once it's you know once it's all put together the wire is going to be moving around much but you don't want them rubbing against really sort of sharp surfaces while you're sort of putting it together so I just use a bit of me an extra thing to help melt the plastic a little bit and smooth things out so that the wire doesn't get, uh, get caught up and you know affect the insulation on the wire okay so now if I uh, put this together maybe you can sort of see what I mean by having the wires come out on the side here uh, I'm going to have all the wires coming out here and then I'll be able to sort of solder them all together, shove it back in there and then put the side plate on. So that's what the uh, that's what the plan is anyway. So I've got that one done. So that's the, the rear thruster sort of uh, dealt with. Now if we look at this piece, we've got the, uh, well, the wave motion cannons in the front. Just see a little bit of plastic there I need to remove. Um, so we've got these wave motion guns at the front and for that what I've done is I've taken a couple of my LEDs and well, let's see if you, you may be able to just see that what I've done is I've literally dunked them in 
X20, what's that one? X26 clear orange by Tamiya. So um, that way that's going to give me the color that I want. And I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to bend these wires a little bit just so it's easier for me to work out. Uh, hold the hold the LED in place while I actually get it glued. So I've sort of done this a couple of times off camera. That doesn't mean I'll necessarily be any better at it, but I've got, learned a few tricks along the way. So what I'm going to do is dunk this light in the UV resin, get it lined up on the holes, and get that set in place. All right, my last bit is maybe just a little bit in here as well. see if I can get this lit up so you can actually see both both lights on at once and we can get an idea of the light blocking that needs to be done all right so now you can see both coming out there and of course there's the nose piece to go over that but um, I also know they both work yeah, gently pry this apart now it's time to do some light blocking. So again, for light blocking, I'm just going to use this uh, tulip fabric paint. I find it's really, really easy to use. I just literally just squirt it in. All right, now this stuff will take a bit to dry. So in the meantime, I'll take you through the rest of the uh, rest of the process that I'm doing. Now there are four uh, thrusters, four smaller thrusters that sort of go with this one, so two smaller ones, and they're going to be uh, red light. So again, I'm just going to take the LEDs and dunk them in clear red to uh, colorize them. The problem is, is that the pieces that go on the side that house the, um, the thrusters, these pieces here. If I show what they look like, there we go. So it's basically those two and there's another two on the other side. So they're held in place like that. But these small uh, thruster parts, I want to paint them separately because they are actually uh, I think they're like a really dark grey or a black on the outside and then they're red on the inside. So I do want to actually paint these separately from the rest of the hull. But that presents a bit of a problem in the fact that I really need to attach the LEDs um, you know, to them um, when I sort of assemble it. So I've worked out a way of getting around it and it's pretty, um, pretty mad idea. But essentially it's using... Um, using heat shrink as a conduit. So this is a trick that I used in my uh, Regult build not so long ago, where you set this up in the piece you want. So when you're feeding wires through it, there's no obstructions and it means it goes through nice and nice and cleanly. So I'll be using uh, a bit of heat shrink in that way to deal with this issue. So put that one aside. So that's one thing, and I'll just show you how that will work. If I can get it lined up properly. And of course I've just stuck my hand. <laughs> stuck my hand in the uh, fabric paint. So I have to check that light block again. But What this means is that when I've got this uh, bit of heat shrink in place, 
I'll be able to actually take an LED on the side because you remember I'm going to have access on the side here and I can sort of feed it through feed it through give it a bit of a jiggle here and there and feed it through and that will take me all the way to the back and then I can take some very fine tweezers and pull them through this hole that I've made so pull them out there and what that means is that I'll be able to attach those four small thrusters um, after these two halves have been glued together well that's the hope anyway if um, it doesn't work it could get very messy the other thing I need to consider is the wires that will actually go down the tube into the base where the uh, I'll have a USB uh, plug powering this thing so for that I've got two lengths of wire, so a positive and negative, and I'm going to feed them up through the hole where the tube eventually will be. Now I'm going to need a little bit to pop out the side here so that I can attach all the LEDs and everything to, you know, all together and then I should be able to sort of fold this back into the cavity of the hull because it's all going to get uh, pretty hairy I think once once this is sealed up I'm going to work out a trick in these ones is that there's a couple of sort of spaces within this cavity where the wire can be clamped in uh, naturally and then I can just go in there with some with some resin just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, this is, I mean, this is not the actual tube I'm going to be using, but it is the same um, same diameter. So to give you an idea of how it's going to look, I'm just going to get this resin out of the way before I stick my elbow in it. Uh, so, what will happen is we will feed these wires through, and I think they're thin enough. Alright, so that'll be mounted on the post like that. We've got the wires already sort of feeding in. And um, apart from letting the light blocking dry, I can now sit my do it in place there we go and then once this piece goes on what I might do is clip these wires because they're becoming problematic and these wires they don't have to be particularly long because it's just long enough to join them all up outside of the uh, outside of the the hull This probably doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment, but I sort of get it pressed together. Hopefully it does. Here we go. All right, so it looks really messy at the moment. But once these two parts are glued together, um, it's going to allow me to wire everything up um, after the fact. So we've got basically, um, at the moment, we've got three LEDs hooked up and the black and the red wire here for the uh, power. And for the four that are going to make up the smaller thrusters, I will be able to get these other ones out of the way for now. Hold them down, but I'll be able to get in there and hopefully it doesn't make a liar out of me. Use the conduit and the tweezers. And so this is why I've kind of um, drilled a, a few extra or ground out a few extra holes just so that I can actually feed things through. But now you can see I've got one out and then I can dunk that in the red paint 
I can then glue it to this bit. I can set this piece in place. So this piece will sort of uh, sit in there. Pull that one back a bit. And so, yeah, I'll be able to, you know, have this all painted and then I can sort of go on with the next bit, put that in place. So, yeah, it will go together. It's just a matter of being a bit gentle with it. And let's see if uh, this one will show up. Probably won't because it's not really in the right place. Oh, look at that. So you can see that's the, the one light now. Of course, there's no, uh, you know, I haven't done any light blocking or anything like that, but um, you get the idea. So that's sort of how I've worked out how I'm going to get around, you know, trying to get these two halves, the hull together while um, still being able to feed you know other LEDs into it during the construction phase yep so that's the uh, that's the process I intend to use um, I've got to go ahead and sort of do the same thing for the other ones I haven't done yet and then the next step will be to glue these two halves together and deal with deal with these seams here so I've been filling these seams on the side of the rear thrusters and also just a little bit of cleanup on the uh, on the front here so but i've got to this stage and i realize i haven't actually shown the build in its completion and what these kits actually look like <clears throat> out of the box so you'll have to ignore the cables coming out of the bottom of this one but um this is uh, there's three that are in this sort of style where you've got the four turrets and it's sort of that classic Andromeda um, Andromeda look now the other two in the kit the only real difference between them is when we take out the um, the bridge I might have to take out some of these guns it's a little bit fiddly and so the yeah, the two different style kits are pretty much identical except for the bridge section. So there's two of them, um, or is it the Apollo Norm and the Antares, I think, that uh, have this, what I like to think is the, uh, the Queen Alien's head. So it takes up the space of the rear um, weapons. Put this... Uh, it still has a couple of turrets on the front and so that's what it uh, that's what it looks like so you know beautiful detail you can see underneath you've got the uh, you know the I don't know if they're antennas fins whatever they are all the prickly little bits that sort of hang off these um, you know off these ships so that's what it looks like because um, yeah I realize I got to the point where you probably haven't seen the actual build. So on that note I'm going to clean up the rest of these seams and I think I'm going to leave it here at this video. The next video will be all about the painting. So until then I'll catch you later.